Hello. Today we're going to conduct an experiment to learn about how the economy works and neoliberalism. This is an easy experiment. You can do it at home or even for your high school science fair. This is all you need. Some wood for a frame, a bit of string, some plastic tubing, a balloon filled with water, a net, I made mine out of an onion bag, and a bicycle pump. That's all you need. But first, let's take a short aptitude test, just to make sure we're clear on the basic concepts. Okay, first we'll just do a warm-up. Which of the following words doesn't fit? Bunny, puppy, kitty, gerbil, or alligator? Time's up. Yes, you're right, alligator. All the rest of these words are cuddly pets, but alligators are not cuddly pets. Now for a harder one. Race, sex, sexual orientation, class, or disability. Time's up. That's right, class. Class is the one that's different. This triangle represents society. When we look at class, it looks something like this. Down here are the people who can't work or can't find jobs. They tend to be pretty poor. Here are the people with lousy jobs. Low paying, probably boring. They may have to work at more than one job at a time to get by. These are jobs that probably don't have benefits or job security, or they even allow them to get unemployment insurance, in which case they would, if they lose their jobs, fall down here. Above are the people with decent jobs. Jobs with benefits, security, pensions, probably more interesting and much better paid. And then at the very top, we have the people who own and run the corporations that most of these people work for. There are, of course, a few people, small farmers, small business people, who work for themselves. But generally, most of us work for the larger corporations. As you can see, all of these lines are horizontal. Now for the other words. Let's look at sex first, whether you're a man or a woman. If you look at our model of society, sex should look like this. Half of us are women, and half of us are men. Well, that's what it should be like, but in fact it doesn't because of discrimination against women. It actually looks more like this. Fewer women own those corporations or control them, and more women are in poverty, whereas men tend to dominate at the top. Okay, what about race? Race has to do with the color of your skin, your physical characteristics, even though sometimes the language you speak or where you come from or even your religion can get all mixed up in that. What does race look like in society? Well, it should look like this. All the different racial groups are found both at the bottom and the top of our social hierarchy. You see, just like in sex, the lines are mostly vertical. But unfortunately, just like in sex, it doesn't quite look this way. In fact, it's more like this. Some groups are mostly at the bottom. Other groups do a little better. Dominant group controls most of the top, and maybe another group is not quite as much at the top. This has to do with the way racism works in our society. Once again, though, the lines are still vertical. So let's look at sexual orientation. Sexual orientation is whether you're gay or straight or bi or lesbian. Now, since gay people are born everywhere, it should look like this. Gay people and straight people. But on the other hand, since gay people are discriminated against, maybe it looks more like this. Now, some marketing companies seem to think that it looks more like this. Anyway, since gay people aren't really counted in the census, we don't know. So, in deference to queer theory, Let's just leave this messy. Anyway, the lines are mostly 
vertical. And finally, what about disability? People with disabilities are people who have trouble doing things that other people don't, like climbing upstairs or seeing traffic lights or hearing a conversation or learning something really quickly. People with disabilities face a lot of discrimination. So when you look at society, people with disabilities tend to look like this. A lot more disabled people have no jobs at all or work in pretty low paying jobs. But still you can see the line is vertical. Now, that leads us to the other difference between class and those other words. Because if we wanted to change the differences between people in terms of race or disability or sexual orientation, the way that they're treated, then what we have to do is fight discrimination. But if we want to change class differences, then what we have to do is change the shape of society so that some people are not a lot wealthier than others. With a shape like this, the differences between the top and the bottom are not nearly so great. So now we're ready for our experiment in neoliberalism. So, this is our society about 1970. You can see that it's a bit more rounded than our triangle, but it's still a triangle shape. And these lines represent those different classes. The people at the top who own everything, the decent jobs, the lousy jobs, and the no jobs at all. And on the side, these lines represent members of those minority groups or discriminated groups that don't quite make it to the top and are found more at the bottom. One of the reasons that our shape here is so much more round is that it's held up by this net, the social safety net. The social safety net is made up of things like welfare and unemployment insurance and pensions, but it also includes things like uh, public health care, public libraries, public parks, public transit, all those things that make it easier for people to live their lives without paying a fortune. The social safety net, as you can see, is supported by the state, and it's held up by, or paid for by, people's taxes. Taxes which come more or less from people who are a bit more wealthy in society. So what the state is doing is redistributing wealth from the more affluent members to the poorer members to make sure nobody falls below the poverty line. Since the social safety net keeps the bottom up, it keeps more people in the middle, and it gives us a structure that is generally pretty resilient. So that brings us to neoliberalism. Now, neoliberalism doesn't have anything to do with being liberal, uh, tolerant, friendly to your neighbors, getting more sex, anything like that. Neoliberalism is an economic philosophy that basically says that government is way too big and it's interfering too much in the economy and that we'd all be better off if government was smaller and just left things alone. So what they say should be done is that the taxes that the rich people were paying to maintain the social safety net should be reduced and government should shrink and it should give up trying to regulate the banks and the corporations and control trade and do any of those other kinds of things that government used to do. The neoliberal philosophers say, why should rich people be penalized for being rich? They should be rewarded. Why should they have to pay these taxes to support the social safety net and poor people? The rich people think this is a brilliant idea. Why should they have to pay these taxes? So they begin to give money to politicians who believe in neoliberal philosophy, and the first thing they do is to start major tax cuts. Since the same thing has happened in most other developed countries, everybody has to join in because with neoliberal deregulation, if taxes are high in one place, corporations can simply pick up and move to someplace else. So, how is this going to affect our balloon? Well, as you can see, as these taxes are reduced, that rich people who don't have to pay so much taxes start to get richer and richer. They're moving up towards wealth. But it also means that the social safety net begins to sag and more and more people sink below poverty. You note how this especially affects people who are members of those discriminated groups. Now more of them are down here in poverty. And what that also means is that those few people who are a little bit higher on the top now have less in common with those at the bottom and so it makes it harder for those people to work together. Some people are concerned about this increase in poverty. 
but the neoliberal politicians have an answer. They say, ah, oh, the poor people are just lazy bums anyway. They deserve anything they get. And since more minority groups tend to be towards the bottom, that produces racial and other kinds of stereotyping. It also begins to squeeze that so-called middle class, because even though they may pay a little less taxes, they now have to pay for services a whole lot more, things that used to be public but are now private. And as you can see, the distance between the top and the bottom is, is much greater than it ever was before. But the people who own and control the corporations are really happy. And that's what counts, isn't it? Until they realize that they have a problem with this new shape. Most people's incomes are stagnating or declining. And that means they can't buy as much stuff as they used to. For example, even if Bill Gates buys a million pairs of shoes, it doesn't make up for the 40 million people down here who can no longer afford a second pair. And that's a problem for the corporations and the rich people who own and control them because if people don't buy their stuff, then the corporations go broke and the whole system falls apart. But luckily, neoliberalism has a solution for this as well. Remember deregulation? They've deregulated the banks. So the banks can now begin to pump credit into the system so that people can buy just like they used to, even if they can't afford it. Here are the banks, and here comes the credit. And buying, and the economy can keep expanding, and expanding, and expanding. And everybody is really happy, because things are just like the good old days. Well, that's the end of today's experiment in neoliberalism. I hope you've enjoyed it. Now the only thing we worry about is who's going to clean up this mess.